uh, as you probably all know, RAC Foundation produce a lot of really good thought-provoking reports about what's going on now and what's going on in the future. So let's hear now from the director, Steve Gooding. Thank you. I've got um, basically three, three thoughts to offer you for this afternoon's conversation. They're not all nicely chained together as one story, but I think they'll reflect some of the discussion that's been going on here over the course of the two days. Um, so one of them, starting really near term, is an observation I've had for quite a while now, both in my previous job and the current one, and that's that there's a lot of technical innovation going on in what I might call the management of traffic uh, in the world of ITS. But I don't think that world has ever really managed to engage with the people who might buy its products. And I think we need a, a much better conversation to go on between those of us who are engaged in running, maintaining, looking after networks, and helping me get where I need to be, and those who are coming up with really clever, technical, innovative solutions, but who tend to talk in a slightly different language. So maybe a, a bit more translation between the two. Events like this are good, I think, for bringing both parties together. We need to broaden that out and get more people involved. Second, um, well, we can't possibly have a session without talking about autonomous cars because uh, apparently that's the law now, and every meeting we have to talk about them. So I'll just say this. Um, I'm fascinated by the prospect of the, of the driverless vehicle. But I'm also fascinated by the prospect that, starting from where we are, we have in the region of 34 million non-driverless cars on our roads, currently being driven by something in the region of 38 million full license holders. And we've got to remember that we start from where we are. And a lot of the, uh, I'm going to call it hype, that I hear about the world with the driverless car, where I'll never need to park again. Well, I'll vote for that. Um, but we're going to have to pass through some sort of transition. And I'm, I was reminded earlier on today by Eva up there that there's a very interesting bit of analysis done by Scott Levine at University College looking at what would have to be true to achieve some of the traffic benefits that are claimed for autonomous cars. And one of the things that would have to be true is we'd all have to wear a neck brace because the vehicles would be accelerating and decelerating so quickly but the idea that you'd actually get any work done is quite laughable, um, but you might rick your neck in the process. So I think we've got to be a bit realistic about how we want these things to operate. And lastly, my third point follows on directly from the session just before lunch, because I agree the data revolution is key to achieving a lot of what we want to achieve. And what we've learned, I think, from that session and from everything else we know is there's an immense amount of data to be had, it's being generated by and held by multiple different organizations that don't tend to talk to each other. And whilst, and I can say this now, whilst like everyone else here, I'm sure, I was entranced uh, by the um, roads minister's announcement yesterday on roads data, I would say it was a step, an infinitesimally small step in the right direction. And I continue to be a bit frustrated about where are the big steps going to be? When are we going to get to the point where we have a single, national, free, open, geo-referencing of the assets that we're talking about? Without that, I think we're, we're going to be hampered forevermore. So I think more open data, more widely available, uh, including to very valuable organizations like the RAC Foundation. Thank you. Thanks, Steve.